Hey everyone, it's Brandy and welcome back to my channel, Brandy Janae's Bookshelf. Today I'm here to do the last video to highlight the books that I wanted to from all of my 2021 reading. And as you can tell from the title of the video, today I'm going to be talking about the books that most surprised me throughout the year. <music> as I said is supposed to be focusing on books that surprised me but didn't necessarily end up being all-time favorites. Now I will say I think there are a few things that are on this list that were originally on my favorites list but I felt like it was more fitting to include them here. I know two for sure maybe three of the things that I have to talk about they did receive five stars but like I said I felt like it was most fitting to put them here in this video and I didn't want to have any duplicates across videos. All of the rest of the books that I have ended up with four stars but I enjoyed them way more than I was expecting to so I felt like I should highlight those books and there are probably some that I forgot to put on this list but these were the standouts that I'm still thinking about at the end or actually at the beginning of a new year. I'm still thinking about how I felt about reading those and you know either wanting to reread them or wanting more in the world. So I think that's everything that I wanted to start off this video with so let's just go ahead and jump right into the first book that I wanted to talk about which is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This one is following this character named Kira Navarro who is in her final days of studying this new planet. She's out doing a routine survey where she accidentally stumbles upon uh, this alien relic and it ends up setting off this intergalactic war. Things go crazy from there but that is the general idea, very summed up idea of what this story is about. And after hearing people talking about it, a lot of people were giving it like average reviews. So I was a little worried about how I would feel about it, especially because this would be like my first real entrance into like the adult science fiction world. Um, so I was a little concerned after hearing reviews. So I kind of just try to go into this with an open mind and I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, it was actually pretty easy to grasp most of what was going on for me or pretty much everything that was going on. It did sometimes feel a bit long but because I did decide to go with the audiobook while reading this it did almost feel like a movie just without the picture and I think because of that it just made it that much more enjoyable for me. I think at some point I will have to try to make this a reread but this is really good. The cover is beautiful and Hopefully we get more in this world because I think that this is such an expansive world that there could be a lot that goes on in here that could still be interesting. If you enjoyed like Overall Rising and you're looking for like an adult book that has a similar feel I think this is a good one to pick up because it did give me like Overall Rising but like more adult. <laughs> so um I figured I'd just throw that in just in case you guys are curious. The next book that I wanted to talk about is The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold which is a YA post-apocalyptic story that is set in New England and in this story a deadly fly flu has swept through the world and has left only a few survivors and we're following the story through three perspectives. So we start off following 18 year old Nico and at the start of the story her father ends up or maybe she has already left. Her father sent her on a very specific mission and she's like making her way by foot to get to this location and do the thing that our father you know set her out to do. Another character is Kit who is a very young boy who's very into art. I'm pretty sure that he is the youngest of the characters that we encounter throughout the story. And then the final perspective is known as the deliverer who seemingly knows a lot about the world but is revealing very little in the little sections that we get from the deliverer and it's just following each of these characters as they're doing different things throughout the world which sounds very vague and maybe not super interesting but this book kind of blew me away in a way that I was not expecting at all. Just like a little sneak peek 
it kind of deals with timelines and things like that in a post-apocalyptic world and it's just a lot of different intricacies that are involved in this story that I wasn't expecting going into it and I just thought that it was so freaking well done. I ended up liking this way more than I ever thought I would. If you haven't just give it a try and this is one of those but it's hard because you have to be curious enough to get to the end because it really is one of those books that doesn't come together until the end and I'm glad that I stuck with it I guess to get to that point because it was well worth it. I would be interested in reading something else kind of trippy like this because this is good. This is really good. Next set of books that I have to talk about is actually the first three in a graphic novel series and that is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So I have volume one, volume two, and then finally volume three. As far as the series, this is following characters Charlie Spring and Nick Nelson. They're both going to the same like all boys school and there's like this class that has mixed grades in it and that's where the two of them end up meeting. The previous year before they started the story Charlie was actually outed as being gay. It was a big uproar at school. I think he ended up getting bullied and things like that but now everything is cool. Everyone knows he's gay and he's kind of just living his life. Nick comes in the picture. He ends up getting a crush on Nick and Nick is struggling with his sexuality after he realizes that he might have some not so platonic feelings for Charlie and this series is pretty much just about them discovering each other themselves and figuring out if a relationship can actually work between the two of them. Yeah I was not expecting my heart to be so happy with this. This is I think one of those that I feel like came at the right time because if I had read it at like some other point I feel like I might not have been as invested in this just because it's a teenage romance and I felt like lately I haven't really been caring about that as much but this was so heartfelt. The characters were like they started off as friends and then the friendship developed into more. There was just something really endearing about this. It does get a little deeper as you start to go further into the series and I'm sure there are going to be some heavier topics that are explored as we go throughout the series. Um, I think it was introduced towards the end of volume two. It came up pretty prominently in volume three but we haven't really like started addressing it I guess. I'm sure that it's going to take like a deeper route but as far as what I've read so far I I loved this. I think the first two got five stars and then volume three got four stars. Overall I did really enjoy the series or I do really enjoy the series. Like I said I will be um, getting a copy of volume four at some point. I know this is something that I don't talk about a whole lot but sometimes I can be super picky with the artwork and I don't think it was like my absolute favorite when I first started but it quickly grew on me and um I'm a fan. Alright so the next couple that I have to talk about I'm pretty sure that both of these are um, adult science fiction. The first of those is Bonds of Brass by Emily Skretsky. In this book we're following Etienne Nassian who is training at Umber Military Academy. He's basically trying to make the most of a bad situation after the Umber Empire has invaded his home planet. After an assassination attempt against his best friend Gal, he ends up finding out that Gal is actually the heir to the Umber Empire and now he's tasked with ensuring the safety of the son of the person who ruined his world. I thought I wasn't someone who was into like political based stories. However when reading this I was just like okay well maybe I was just reading the wrong stuff because this was excellent. There were just so many elements about this story that I just absolutely loved and this was like one of those things I was expecting more of what I typically look for in sci-fis which is like dealing with aliens or dealing with space travel and things along those lines. However this one like I said had a lot more politics than those other things but like I said I did not mind. Let's move on to the next sci-fi that I have to talk about which is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This one is following a character named Dara who is living in the world that is segregated by color systems. Golds are the highest the elite they kind of run the world and reds are at the bottom the lowest of the low they're basically slaves and darrow is red as you could probably expect all of the reds have been raised to believe that the earth is dying and they're out on mars to make the planet livable for generations to come 
However, he finally realizes that they have been lied to and what they have been working towards has already been accomplished. So the planet or wherever they're supposed to be mining at is, is already livable and now they're just basically being used as slave labor. And then not long after that, he decides to join a rebel group to infiltrate the golds and kind of take them down from the inside. This is another one that although it is sci-fi is still very much like political games going on in this and one thing I could say about Pierce Brown is he is not afraid to cut it off. It was it was ruthless it was it was so good. This just has me really excited for the world that he has set up for the rest of this video. We're switching over into like all of my manga. I think the first one I have is technically a manga, which is Korean version instead of Japanese. But um, yeah, all of these that I have to talk about now are all in that same vein. And the first one that I have to talk about is volumes one and two of Solo Leveling by Chu Gong. And then it was adapted into the manga by Red Ice Studio. I don't think I've ever mentioned that before but these are like novels that were made into like comic versions basically. In this story we're following this character named Jin Wu who is a hunter. In this world hunters exist to be able to kill off the monsters who keep appearing in these different portals. Um, I think it's across the world but this specific set of characters we're focusing on live in Korea like South Korea I believe and Jin Woo is one of those hunters. They have a ranking system and it's like S is the highest, E is the lowest, there are a couple letters in between there but E rank like I said is the lowest and Jin Woo is actually E rank hunter and he's known as like the lowest ranked hunter that has ever existed. And because of that, he doesn't get to go on like these super high paying jobs. He's usually like in the way, but he's doing it because he has responsibilities that he needs money for. And, you know, he's doing whatever he can to make the money for his family. He's on the way to a new job at the beginning of the story. Everyone is kind of excited to see him also kind of mocking because they're like, if he's here, it can't be too much work. It has to be super easy because otherwise he wouldn't be here. They go in, they pretty much tackle what they thought they were there to tackle. However, they find out that it is a double dungeon, like it's another section to where they were. They vote and they decide to go and explore and find out what this other part of this dungeon is. Long story short, rather there are some things that they weren't expecting happen and a lot of people die. Jin Woo, he's close to dying but right before he dies there is like this pop-up like a video game that says like you have unlocked this um, secret quest. Will you accept whatever it is? I can't remember all of the details because it's been a few months now. He doesn't want to die so he accepts it and we're following him as he goes through whatever this thing is that he really doesn't know what's going on. I think this came in a, the February Manga Spice Cafe box and I feel like I have been gushing about this series ever since because I absolutely fell in love. This is one of those series that definitely should have been on like my favorites list of the year but I feel like it fits way better and like most surprising because picking this up I was just like oh that looks interesting but I did not expect to fall in love with this series to the point where I was just like anybody who has been on my channel I was like please read it because I need somebody to talk about it with it it's like I felt like it was that good and I hadn't read anything like this in a while or maybe ever. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is actually an entire series. That is the After the Rain series by June Mayuzuki which is this is actually like omnibus edition so it's only five volumes of this but it's two and one so it's like ten volumes of the series. In this story we're following this character named Akira Tachibana who's a 17 year old girl who was like the star of her high school track team but then she gets injured and she doesn't end up going back to track team. We don't really get any information on why or what happened but she kind of stopped hanging out with her track friends and she is kind of lost but one day she's out and she ends up running into this guy and 
one thing leads to another and she ends up working at the same family restaurant that he's a manager at and is following her as she develops a crush on her 45 year old manager and the outcome of that after i read volume one i decided to pick up the rest of the series because i it was just something super like refreshing and intriguing about the way the story was going one thing i will say is that it's not technically an age gap romance um it kind of seems that way in volume one but eventually it does like kind of mellow out it was one of those things where it wasn't like super excited there wasn't always these super dramatic moments i think volume one of this omnibus edition had the, like the most drama of everything maybe a little bit in volume two um like kind of wrapping up some things that happened but after that it's just like very slice of life very like just every day every it was just refreshing <laughs> i don't know how else to say this it was just very simple and something very easy to read and it, I just enjoyed it so much. I think every one of these probably got around four stars. I don't know if any of them were above that. But this is a series I can see myself rereading multiple times in the future. Moving on, the next one that I have is actually just the first volume in the series. And that is Mashley Magic and Muscles Volume 1 by Hajimi Komoto. This is another one. Actually, I think all of the rest of these are ones that came in Manga Spice Cafe. In this world um, that the story is taking place in, magic is everything and your amount of ability kind of determines your social status. And in this story we're following this character named Mash who is living deep in the forest with his father. He actually doesn't have any magic but he has a lot of physical strength because of the training that his father has put him through for as long as he has known. He goes into town one day to buy like cream puffs or something and it's discovered that he doesn't have any magical abilities and people who don't have magical abilities are shunned or maybe even killed off in some cases but everyone is like shocked that this non-magic person is just like walking around and after he's discovered he's kind of forced into attending this magical school and competing to be the top student so he can get this cash prize so that he can go back to living in the forest with his father and they can live in peace this one like snuck up on me i know it wasn't really meant to be but i almost found this funny at points because of how our main character he was just like super oblivious he's willing to do just about anything and people were just like what is wrong with you like do you not realize that I'm mocking you or things like that? And he was just like, it is what it is. But as soon as he felt like something was an injustice or someone else was getting bullied, he was just like, we're not, we're not doing that here. So it was just something about the story that just drew me in. And I loved every bit of reading this and I definitely need to go pick up more of these. All right, the second to last one that I have to talk about is another one that kind of just snuck up on me. And that one is Skip and Loafer Volume 1 by Masaki Takamatsu. And this one is following this girl from the country. She has lived in the country for her whole life. But she has big dreams and she decides that in order to be able to pursue those dreams, she needs to go to a city school. So she decides to move to Tokyo with her aunt, I believe, so that she can, you know, go to high school in a big city and it's just following her story as she goes there and things don't go exactly how she thought they would and kind of finding her way and I thought that I wasn't really gonna like this because I was just like this is gonna be like a typical shoujo there's gonna be bullying and I think that I am personally over like that type of storyline. This is one of those stories it's just like we're gonna break all your expectations and we're gonna give you something else. So it still has some of the elements that I wasn't really looking for like there's bullying but it's not excessive or at least there are characters who don't care about what the majority is saying and they're just like you're interesting I want to get to know you. It seems like it's going to be a very sweet story about friendships and possible romances and I'm just here for it and I'm looking forward to reading more about it. And then finally the last manga and the last like most surprising read that I have for this year which this was like the main inspiration for this video that is Haru's Curse by Asuka Konishi. In the story we're following this character named Natsumi who is the woman on the cover. At the beginning of the story her sister, her younger sister has died and she reluctantly agrees um, to date her sister's ex-fiance Togo. Him and her younger sister were set up for an arranged marriage and he was just like 
my parents are going to be insistent on me getting married to someone from your family so we should start getting to know each other basically at first she's just like no i don't think this is a good idea but then she reluctantly agrees she tells him that he can only take her to the places that he has taken her sister when i got this in the box I was kind of like on the fence about this one because one I don't really care for, for the art style and then on top of that I was just like I don't know if I can root for that because what I don't know it just seemed like very icky and I was just like I don't know if that's really gonna work out for me so I was concerned and I fell in love with these characters falling in love this was just like a whole other level than I was expecting it to be um, because it's like as you read on more and more is revealed and you realize that things aren't as they initially seemed. I don't want to give it away so I'm just going to stop talking there. This was so good. It seems like a very taboo romance but it was so good and it was so well done and it was this was like ultimate chef's kiss on manga because I like at first I was just like I, I don't think I'm gonna like this. This is probably gonna get like two stars because of how the story is set up and I was just like there's no way and then on top of that I was just like I don't really care for the art by the end I wasn't even thinking about the art because I was just like these characters they deserve each other and they deserve to be happy and I love them so much <laughs> sorry kind of a little crazy there but this one did end up getting five stars I know this is kind of similar to like best reads of the year let me know in the comments if you had any books that you were expecting not to really think too much of but they ended up being maybe like new favorites of yours throughout the year I would be interested in know because I'm always looking for new things to check out also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed as well as subscribing if you have not already Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.